We've got joining us right now to make sense of this conversation, a sports editor, Eniton Obadino. Thank you so much, Eniton, for joining me on the show today. No, it's a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, the pleasure is all ours here on In The Game. Let's begin with this, uh, you know, controversy concerning the slots that has been given to awarded Africa for the Under-17 uh, World Cup. How does CAV plan to allocate the slots required for the World Cup, given that FIFA has allocated 10 slots to Africa for the 2025 FIFA Under-17 World Cup in Qatar? How do you think they plan to go about this? Uh, CAF has basically been very sluggish when it comes to policy decisions uh, for most of the major tournaments. I could make reference to uh, the WAFCON. Uh, there are still no clear dates of where it will happen. Mm -hmm. And immediately FIFA uh, basically uh, expanded the Under-17 World Cup to make it a yearly affair and also to increase the number of teams that will be participating. There were no words from CAF uh, concerning how they uh, hope or they are planning to adapt uh, the African Under-17 Championship to be able to fit in and give more teams opportunity standard-wise. So it's a bit of a, of a known thing now with this very CAF uh, president and, of course, the CAF uh, organization that they are very slow when it comes to policy decision-making, which, which by far led to the back and forth in terms of what people were expecting, uh, uh, basically uh, expecting in terms of number of teams that will qualify for each region for the Af Af under 17 AFCON. Mm -hmm. You also have to take it back to the very first policy decision they made uh, when they decided to regionalize the qualification system, hoping to reduce the power of the, power, uh, of the, of the bigger countries and, of mm -hmm. course, increase attendance for the more smaller countries who would have, to, would have struggled to qualify if it's an open qualification system. So it has always been a recurring uh, from Destiny when it comes to CAF and their policy decision making. Okay, let's talk about this regional representation you just brought to the fore right now. Now, CAF has got six regions, typically bringing two representatives each. There are concerns about fairness and um, representation, the fairness and representation from these regions that CAF has made. How can CAF justify leaving out two top teams, including two of the top three? Histor historically, we know that um, successful nations always go, the top three successful nations will always go, but... How can CAF justify the two that they will be bringing up from these regions? Trying to do the bigger evil and lesser evil. Uh, CAF, in their own wisdom, before this very administration uh, of the current president, decided that other regions deserve to also have some of their youngsters participate at the biggest stage of uh, football at the under 17 level. Mm. And then they decided to regionalize the qualification system so that. Uh, they can get those smaller countries who would have probably struggled uh, playing against top countries like uh, top countries like Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, and this mostly affects uh, the, south, uh, the western parts of Africa, uh, West Africa, basically because they have the highest representation for CAF. So by regionalizing, it means they can reduce uh, the dominance of the south, uh, southern part, uh, south, western part of Africa, rather, uh, mm -hmm. so that they will not get so much of the representation for CAF. Uh, at the world level, and that's, that's the idea. But of course, they did not weigh the impact on the superpowers on the, uh, Western Africa or the bigger countries that get to qualify of how it will also reduce their at their own pace. Mm -hmm. uh, they, are sort, they are sort of uh, reducing power for one region while helping other regions. Uh, to, but of course, football development is not like that. Mm -hmm. uh, attending under 17 World Cup does not mold a talent for your country and does not uh, bestow uh, uh, basic uh, exposure that will take you to the world level. I, I would have thought CAF would have done enough, a lot of research to focus on helping each country around Africa set up a proper academic structure that mm -hmm. talents, proper talents that will come out and then they can be they can be strong enough to take on the rest of the world at whatever level. Instead of using a setting of Anita, are you still with me? Okay, I think we've got um, some network glitch there and we'll um, return to the conversation with Eniton or Badino. There are conversations that the regional strength must be considered by the Confederation of African Football. Okay, I get the information that we have Eniton or Badino back. Eniton, are you here? Thank you so much for returning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 basically, on now, what, what I was trying to uh, for, uh, explain out is basically uh, the problem that CAF uh, created by trying to solve another problem. Mm -hmm. And I, I, like, I, like I said, I, I don't know if that was captured, 
uh, what they could have done was to help each African country to set up a proper academic system where talents can be discovered. And you will not pin the development of African football, African youth football, on attending the FIFA Under-17 World okay. Cup like they have done by regionalizing the qualification to help other smaller countries uh, mm. to qualify by using uh, the superpowers like of Nigeria, Ghana, and uh, West Africa are the biggest. Uh, they are the biggest region that are suffering from this policy decision by Cap. So it's a problem that needs to be solved. And of course, if you look at, at some of the problems that are emanating from this uh, WAFU B qualification, especially standard-wise, you'd expect that the region with the host country will get one additional uh, country. That's Cote d'Ivoire hosting the other Southern Afghan, and of course, the second and third team or the first and second team, which are uh, not including Cote d'Ivoire, would have qualified for the Afghan. But CAF has at 2020-2021 already made that policy decision that even if a region is hosting, you will be reduced to one country to qualify. Like Kodi so if Cote d'Ivoire had basically uh, won, uh, won, won the WAF on the 17 in Ghana, mm. it would have been saying only, only Burkina Faso. Mm. Uh, not even the two. Even Nigeria made it to the final. I did not win the on the 17 Afghan in Ghana. The, uh, Burkina Faso would have been the only country uh, reducing WAF would be to just one uh, qualifier just because Cote d'Ivoire is hosting. So uh, basically, uh, these are not uh, policy decisions to be proud of uh, from CAF. All right, let's talk about FIFA's response right now. Do you think FIFA should reconsider the slots that has been handed um, Africa, the Confederation of African Football, because right now they're still trying to make sense of the 10 slots that has been awarded the continent? Uh, FIFA cannot do much. FIFA has basically done what they needed to do by expanding the You don't think they should say, reconsider? No, I don't think they should reconsider uh, because you have 12 teams going to the AFCON under 17 and okay, I will now wait for another policy decision from CAF to determine how uh, they will get their 10 qualifiers from Africa. Basically, you are saying about 90, over 90% 90 of countries attending by qualifying for the AFCON under 17 championship, a 12 team tournament, uh, basically 10 out of them will be representing Africa. Mm. FIFA will not want to reconsider because Africa can still present 10 teams. Mm. What, what they will basically have to query is the qualification process that they can speak to CAF and question them that if you are going to have the 10 uh, qualifiers from Africa, you should at least expand uh, your qualification formats uh, mm. to include more countries so that uh, Africa can get some of its best countries to attend uh, this championship. That's what FIFA can do. Uh, but I don't think they will want to consider uh, the number of teams coming out of Africa. Okay, we'll be crossing our fingers, hoping that the Confederation of African Football can get their acts together and give responses to the 10 slots that have been awarded Africa. Let's move away from that a bit and go to senior men's um, national team, that's um, the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Anytime, still with you here. And um, it's a great news to know that, I think it's a bittersweet news, for the fact that um, the Nigerian Football Federation has ruled out Victor Sime from making it to the 2026 World Cup qualifiers against South Africa and Benin Republic. But it's good news for the Nigerian Premier Football League as some um, Enugu Rangers left back, Kenneth Igboke, he has been called as a replacement for Victor Osime. Now, this is Finidi George trying to replace Victor Osime, who has been forced out uh, to, out of that um, encounter against South Africa and Benin Republic. But let's talk about um, the invitation of Igboke. What do you think this tells of the MPFL? The fact that he has been chosen, now um, Finiti did not go out to pick any other player outside um, Europe, but had settled for the MPFL player. Uh, basically, an, an interesting choice. Uh, that tells you that, uh, like someone joked, when the news broke, someone joked that uh, we basically seen some of the players that uh, Finiti uh, must have listed for himself as a back coach to bring to his team because mm. Iboke uh, is one of the most enterprising left backs we have in the league. A very young man with a good uh, brain, uh, with a good head on his shoulder in terms of playing as a left back. It's also an opportunity for Finiti to correct a, a mistake. Uh, if you check at uh, the initial list, uh, they're virtually almost uh, non-existent when it comes to left back uh, for that future, except for uh, Calvin Bassi, who now plays mostly centrally for his club in the English Premier League. Mm -hmm. So there is no other left back. It would have been an Aino situation, but Aino also was out of the uh, major league. So that list was lacking a left back. Uh, they must have realized that a bit later and they decided to correct it okay, by anytime. bringing in uh, Kenneth Igboke into the team. So it's, an, it's, it's a smart choice uh, mm. for Finidi. Uh, it shows you that he was not just coaching in the league. Uh, but but also, what is the rationale? Uh, 
What is the rationale behind them um, bringing a left back for a striker? What do you think, um, Finiti, is um, aiming at? Uh, we already have uh, so much, uh, so much players in that position for strikers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, if uh, the, the list initially was stop heavy when it comes to attackers, uh, we have them in their numbers. We have players who can even switch centrally playing uh, for midfield. We have, we have the likes of Boniface. Uh, you have the likes of Terry Murphy that can easily these are top uh, class strikers. So you could take that gamble uh, to fill in a void that he must uh, he mistakenly uh, created uh, from the very first season. So. Bringing on that striker would not have changed anything, uh, basically, when it comes to this decision. Uh, mm. Osime is out. We have adequate replacement for him. We have about two other three strikers that could place that position. But he's light on left uh, on left side of the defensive setup uh, for his list. So he, it's just a smart choice to correct an earlier error. So the rationale is basically correcting an error uh, okay. because he has enough when it comes to strikers and the team. Okay, uh, I, I know that uh, at the announcement of Sadiq Smile, we saw the praises, the prayers, the motivation coming from Coach Daniel Ogumodede. I'm, I'm waiting, you know, for Ilechuku's drama at this announcement of um, Kenneth Iboke. But with uh, Iboke's inclusion anytime, the number of defenders in the squad has now increased to seven. Could we expect more defensive approach from the Super Eagles of Nigeria in these upcoming matches? Or how might this affect the overall game plan of Finidi George? Okay, uh, well, with the benefit of hindsight, okay. I've watched a lot of uh, a lot of Finiji during his time uh, at Aimba. Uh, Finiji is a purely attacking coach; he loves to attack. So uh, I'm not expecting a lot of defensive uh, approach for him when it comes to Super Eagles. He loves to attack. He loves his teams uh, that I've watched so far. Loves to keep the ball. Uh, they move the ball. Sometimes, if you, if you go back and watch some of their goals, the number of passes leading to a goal is always exciting. Uh, when you watch, you, you could probably count between seven to eight passes. Uh, before a final pass plays the defense, and they are very high volume when it comes to creating chances, and that is where I think uh, some of the strikers will enjoy. And if you take a look at some of the defensive options that mm. is beginning, take for instance Sadiq Ismail. Uh, Sadiq Ismail so far this season has 13 assists, playing as a right fullback for Real Madrid in Nigeria Professional Football League. So that gives you an idea of the thinking behind also his, his defensive setup mm. when it comes to the national team. He's having even uh, he's having defenders with the mindset to attack with the mindset to create assists uh, for his team. So that tells you that it is not necessarily a defensive uh, mindset, bringing an extra defender. Uh, he's just filling up a void that he, must, he mistakenly created uh, the, when you are releasing the first list. All right. Um, this color brings the number of Nigeria Premier Football League players in the Super Eagles squad to three. And it's all, I'm really bothered about how important is this for homegrown talents like Iboke, like Olonu Leke Ojo, like Sadiq Ismai, represented in the national team because we have been clamoring for MPFL players with the fact that Finidi is just um, coming off um, being a coach of Aimba. So he has acclimatized with the league. He understands the league. He sees these players every day. But right now we've got three MPFL players. How important is these three listed into the national team? Uh, very important, and you, you, you've got to look at uh, the quality of the players from the league that is uh, adding to the Super Eagles. It's mm. not really just for the numbers. If we take, if we cast our mind back before now, what most of these coaches do uh, before Finidi was just to invite uh, some MPFL players and use them basically as uh, training materials. They train and they really make the match day squad. Uh, that tells you to just come to the national team, uh, train with the big boys, and go back home. Uh, we've seen what they do with the goalkeeping slot. Mm. Typically, the third choice goalkeeper of the Super Eagles is an MPFL player, but they never really get to taste action. <clears throat> Excuse me, they never really get to take action, taste action when they keep, and that's a problem. But for this current invite, you could see uh, uh, Sadiq Ismail, Kenneth Ibokwe, they have the potential to not just be a part of the team and be training materials, but have the potential to start in games uh, because they are very good at their position. Mm. And of course, uh, if, if you look at our defensive uh, the list, the defensive part of the list that uh, Finiji uh, dropped uh, some time back, it shows that the opportunity for these guys to play once they can prove themselves to the coach. And you have seen them, of course. Most of the league watchers, other league followers, will tell you these are some of the brightest talents we have, which has always been the problem. It's not just about inviting any players from the MPFL. It's about inviting the brightest talent and the young ones, uh, uh, basically, for uh, the Super Eagles setup. But it's also good for the league. Mm. Uh, it reminds me of the days of uh, Stephen Keshi, where you have full Super Eagles internationals playing in the league. 
only a drone land me about the sunshine. Solomon Kwambe, uh, who was at, I think was at Lobby then. They were players who constantly uh, get invited into the national team, get to play games. Uh, uh, Kwambe also, I think, yeah, Kwambe also made the World Cup at some point. Uh, we, we, had, we had some other players too. So we had full Nigerian internationals playing in the league, which of course has its own level of glamour mm. uh, to the MPFL, uh, brings a lot of eyeballs to the league that people want to see who is this player that is playing for the Super Eagles mm. and also playing in the Nigerian Professional Football League. I'm hoping that um, that is what will be said or what will be uh, the question that will be asked by fans when they see Iboke. That's if he's given a chance by Finidi George, like you said. But let's see Iboke's performance for Enugu Rangers. He, um, leading up to the NPFL with um, 20 games played, what does this say about the quality of players in the NPFL and their readiness for international duties? Uh, can you take that again? I didn't get that. With um, his starts... It's great to see that he has played 20 games for Enugu Rangers, of course, after graduating from um, the Kadar, that's the Kadar team. What does this say about MPFL players and their readiness for international duties? Now, it, it says a lot. It's, uh, it, if, 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 if the season is around um, uh, in their 30th week and basically has played 20, that's about 80 to 90 percent of the games. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to consider. Uh, in case of injuries and why he was not out of the other 10 games. Uh, but it tells you that we are bringing a very competitive player into the Super Eagles from the MPFL. And uh, when you also have to consider uh, the traveling scheduling, uh, the traveling arrangements in the league, uh, that tells you for a player to have played this number of games. And he has got about two goals uh, from a left, uh, from the left back position. That tells you he's also an attacking minded player who the coach, Electrico, uh, really likes to use uh, in, in, in that manner. So playing 20. Out of it, for a young star, it mm. shows how competitive he is and how dominant he is for in his position for his team. And we hope to see him transfer that to the Super Eagles. All right, of course, we hope to see him bring the same form from the Rangers down to international duty. We have been speaking to a sports editor, Eniton Obadino. Thank you so much for helping us make sense of CAF um, stands at this time concerning the under-17 African Cup of Nations and also the new invite. Kenneth Iboke for replacement of Victor Osime. Thank you so much, Anita. We do appreciate your time on the show. Thanks for having me.